Welcome to The Anxious Morning, where each weekday morning we take a look at ideas, concepts, and lessons designed to help you understand and overcome your anxiety. For more information, visit us at theanxiousmorning.com. But this is working for me. When we find things that calm us, soothe us, or help us go around or otherwise escape from fear, we often declare that these things work for us. Here's a common exchange I might have with someone new to this process. New person. Everyone is different, and I know it works for me. Me. Great. What are you doing that works? New person. Diet, exercise, essential oils, eliminating stress, and avoiding triggers. In this exchange, the new person is usually arguing against the approach I am describing and trying to convince me that what they are doing is working for them. Oddly, these exchanges always take place in my anxiety recovery Facebook group or in the comments section of an anxiety related video or Instagram post. The conversation takes place in a space occupied by people that are struggling with anxiety and looking for answers. See the issue here? This is like listening to someone tell you that they're winning the Tour de France as they bolt training wheels onto their bike. The point is that you may have an arsenal of rituals and techniques that work for you. But you're reading this, so my guess would be that those things either don't work enough or don't work all the time. I'd wager that you're hoping to fill in the gaps in the wall you're trying to build between you and your anxiety, and that's why you're here. I have a bit of bad news for you. Your wall will never be complete. You will never fill in all the gaps. As soon as you fill one in, another will appear. Unfortunately, if you're looking for a durable solution that actually does work without winding up in an endless game of whack-a-mole with your anxiety, you're going to have to tear down that wall and start a new project. It is very difficult to reach full recovery when your strategy is based on coping, soothing, escape, avoidance, and anxiety suppression techniques. You can't hold on to those, then try to sprinkle acceptance and surrender on top as needed to try to cover all the bases. The two approaches are, for the most part, incompatible. If you insist on strapping 17 flotation devices onto your body before you get in the water, actually learning to swim is going to be a nearly impossible task. I understand that sometimes I frustrate members of the community. When I steer conversations away from cherished soothing techniques, I'm often asked why I bother trying to help with anxiety if I won't let people talk about the things that they are certain are working for anxiety. Tomorrow, we'll address this common point of confusion and frustration. A quick note, this discussion was 100% inspired by some very smart things that were said by my friend Connie. Connie is one of the admins in my Facebook group, and she knows a thing or two about a thing or two, so she gets full credit for speaking this post and tomorrow's post into existence. If you're enjoying The Anxious Morning and you'd like to get a copy of the podcast delivered into your email inbox every morning, visit theanxiousmorning.email and subscribe to the newsletter. If you're listening on Apple or iTunes, take a second and leave a five-star rating, maybe write a small review. It really helps me out. And finally, if you find my work useful and you'd like to help keep it free of advertising and sponsorships, you can see all the ways to support the work at theanxioustruth.com slash support. Thanks so much.